I have so much left's play footage laying around. Got to think of something to do with it. Hmm. <gasps> Licorice, go get my green screen. Knuckles Chaotix is a game originally released for the weird mushroom that grew out of the Sega Mega Drive that got called the 32X. It's one of the two new doodars built to keep the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis going once technology was leaving the poor thing behind. Now, Knuckles Chaotix is almost exactly like Sonic 3. It's very pretty, very colourful, and has plenty of special effects going on all over the place. Which is cool! What isn't cool is the rubber band that connects the two characters you control together. You see, you control two characters at a time. Not in the usual way, where the other potters around behind us, launching attacks when we do, like how Tails behaves in the other games when partnered with Sonic, and you don't switch between the two on a whim, a la Sonic Heroes. No, instead both characters are holding a ring. Said ring is connecting both characters together by way of a magical rubber band made of stars that will tow the other character behind you as you move. Pushing A brings the partner character towards you. B either picks up the partner character or tells them to stay in place, and C jumps. The idea is that the magical star rubber band thing can be stretched by making your partner stand in place and you pull against the rubber band in order to build up tension. Then you release the band to catapult you forwards at high speed. So it's a more complicated, slower spin dash? Ooh, can't wait to run around with both characters flailing through the air like clacker balls in a death dive. Seriously, this wild spitting is common. Both characters have weight and can easily tug the other along with them if they have the momentum. So you always, always feel like you're caught in a tornado, and you'd wish you could just tell the other guy to sod off and let you have fun on your own. This can make keeping your speed difficult. However, the level design seems based around mazes and is actually irritating to travel through. I have in the foggiest what I'm meant to be doing other than reaching the goal at the end and this only makes me feel like I'm missing out. As when I do enter a faux special stage thing, nine times out of ten, it feels like it's a hindrance to be there. I'm always playing this game with a counterweight that only seems to chuck me around with zero finesse compared to what I would expect in a more usual Sonic game. Your character does make an impact on how you do, I think, even if it's minimal if you don't directly control them. Knuckles can climb walls, Espio can walk on ceilings, Vector and Mighty can spin dash at least. A heavy and bomb? No, kind of useless. Bomb can be used as a weapon, sure, but the others are a better pick. Heavy, on the other hand, is a paperweight with legs. You can't attack with him, as he has no abilities, but he seems immune to enemy damage. Also, his weight slows you down and makes the mid-air elastic tussle even worse at top speed if you ever get there. However, the win button seems to be Charmy the Bee. For whatever reason, Charmy can carry people as he flies in any direction he chooses, so making a break for the end goal is far easier if you can just burst up and out. In conclusion, I don't like Knuckles Chaotix. Every other classic Sonic game has, uh, well, some level of appeal. It screams of experimentation and it simply doesn't work for me. It doesn't feel comfortable, it doesn't feel all that flowing, it's not surprising that tying Sonic characters together with bungee rope doesn't somehow translate into fun, and I really dread to think of what else could happen when Sonic Team tries dreaming something else up to fiddle with the Sonic formula. Well, at least guns did what they were supposed to. Hey, I liked that one! Wait. No running allowed, only infuriating rolling? Oh. Uh. Yes! Sonic Labyrinth is stupid, and I hate it. Plus it's ugly, and it needs a good slap upside the head. Made for the Game Gear, which is like a Game Boy Color if it was constructed with 1950s technology to make it bulky and battery heavy, Sonic Labyrinth is one of the stupidest ideas for a Sonic game I have ever played. That's probably saying quite a lot. Imagine Sonic 3D Blast, but you can only gain speed with a spin dash. Somehow, Robotnik took away Sonic's ability to run, and then threw him in a maze. Somehow, 
now, you're still able to spin dash, which is wild, uncontrollable, and bounces around like a hyperactive <laughs> pinball in a bouncy castle. Accuracy is a joke that is replied with hollow laughter as you meander around to find keys to open the door. Repeat until the end of the game, or your will to live implodes. Don't play it. It's a dull piece of garbage which helped make the Game Gear the relative obscurity it was. There must be good Sonic games on portable systems, right? Yeah, no, there's plenty. The one I know all about is... Sonic Battle is what I like to think of as how Sonic prepared for Smash Brothers. This is an isometric, foul 3D beat-em-up on the Game Boy Advance, where Sonic and Chums fight each other in wide, open environments. The cool things about this game are its decent number of characters for a handheld fighter at the time, and its writing. While it's still pretty cheesy, at least it gives each character a decent story arc as they spend time training the strange new robot character, Emerle. Emerle is the real selling point, as he is a robot that steals moves from anyone he fights. He can then cobble these moves together to form a moveset of his own. In essence, he can grow into the way you want him to be, becoming your own custom fighter. The issue is how crap this fighting system really is. While cathartic, the battle system has many attacks but few counters. Blocking is a thing, but it's hugely unreliable. Being launched out of a combo can be countered, but only if you hit a wall to bounce off of, but there are plenty of ways of getting a cheap win, one being to spam special moves. These come in various flavours, but they're all either a projectile, a power attack, or a trap. You can set your character to be immune to either of these attacks, but leave yourself open to the other two. This is the only defence against special moves, other than getting out of the way, but an enemy could easily plumb for spamming a special move you're not defending passively against, then kill you that way. Or you could simply spam specials until they die instead, and you win. There's little strategy involved other than maybe trying to get enough space to slam back with something powerful. Otherwise, it's kind of lacking in depth. There are even moves that can stun lock an enemy and let you wail on them until you, they can't take it anymore. So the two win buttons from uh, the moveset of Rouge and Tails is jumping in the air and pinwheeling around like you've attached a bottle rocket to your leg until the game tells you to stop. While shallow, I do like Sonic Battle. I'm not sure if it's worth anyone with an interest in fighting games to pick up, but I've had fun with it time and time again. Building your own fighter is very well rewarding, and the story of a Merle growing stronger with Sonic and the team actually carried me through to the end. Uh, maybe if it's cheap, pick it up. Well, that was fun. Um, if you liked that, please consider subscribing, maybe liking, maybe coming to everypony.com, maybe going on Every Pony Radio on either our site or PVL, sorry, um, Ponyville Live, or maybe even having a chat with me on uh, UK AV, and maybe you could suggest something for the next show. Ooh. Ugh. I'm hungry. I'm going to get a sandwich. Bye-bye.